Welcome to Jaipur in Rajasthan in India. I'm here with a new Range Rover Hybrid. It's actually a prototype. I'm going to be driving this from here all the way to Mumbai, which is about 700 miles away. I will be taking part in the final leg of a 10,000 mile expedition, which has traveled from the UK, through Western Europe, into Russia, then via various countries with names ending in Stan, before entering China, Nepal, and finally India. Yet even though the last leg through India would be all on road, it turned out to be the most eventful part of the entire expedition. But then driving in India isn't quite like driving anywhere else. The number of potential hazards to look out for is quite frightening. So it's not just vehicles we've got to watch out for and people, there's there's cows wandering around, look there's more there. And apparently they've got the they've got the soul of 300 million gods in them, so it's a very bad thing if you hit a cow. As we headed out of the city and onto the open roads, we encountered some other hazards. Sheep, overladen tuk-tuks, vehicles driving the wrong way down the dual carriageway, and various bizarre wide roads. In India, they ain't too hot on road safety, and that's something Land Rover's photographer was happy to exploit in order to get the perfect picture. Everywhere we went, the Range Rover convoy attracted plenty of attention. Helmetless bikers waved, SUV tailgate riders waved, and excitable children, they waved too. But with kids running about round our vehicles, we needed to have eyes everywhere. Thankfully, the Range Rover's surround cameras helped us navigate both people and chaotic traffic safely. In fact, the SUV's raised driving position meant we felt pretty secure as we approached Chitter Fort. Built on a hillside in the 7th century and occupying 700 acres, it's the biggest fort in India. But as the roads narrowed, the Range Rover's size became a disadvantage. Though its cosseting luxury never did. And our first stopover was somehow fitting. The Lake Palace in Udapur, which appeared in the James Bond film Octopussy. The idyllic location, a contrast to the chaos that awaited us the following day. So here we are at the start of day two, and first things first, we've got to fill up our trucks with fuel, and I, yeah, I think the petrol station owner, well, it's his lucky day, isn't it? It took 640 litres of diesel to fill up the three hybrids and four support vehicles. This cost 35,000 rupees, which works out to about 350 pounds. That's a third of what we'd have paid in the UK. And as we headed off fully fueled, we came across a truck lying on its side. And it wouldn't be the only one we'd see on the final leg of the journey. In fact, each year, 200,000 people die in accidents on India's roads. Fortunately, being in a Range Rover, we were better protected than most. However, you should never forget there is always someone out there with a bigger vehicle than you. Still, as we're about to find out, Range Rovers are pretty good at taking a knock. If you look here, you'll notice a little bit of damage to this car because unfortunately we've had a bit of a scrape. There's an animal in the road, someone had to do an emergency stop, this car did, and one of the cars behind went in the back of it. But it's no big deal because the guys are fully prepared and they can actually repair this thing, well, partially repair it, on the fly. Earlier in the expedition, this particular prototype sucked water into its engine after being driven through a river a lot deeper than the Range Rover's 900mm permitted wading depth. Despite that, and all the extra electric components on board, the hybrid survived that incident and, as you can see by the repair, it survived this one too. We were soon on our way again, but as we headed out of Rajasthan and into Gujarat, the roads became significantly worse. Thankfully, the Range Rover's cushioning air suspension took the sting out of most of the bumps. In India though, there are some potholes which are too deep, even for a Range Rover. So we've had another slight incident here. This particular car is hit a really bad pothole. It's shredded the tyre, damaged the wheel a bit, so the guys are just putting a new one on now. And this was the actual vehicle that was damaged earlier and <laughs> it's not jinxed. It appeared it was because we soon realised the rear wheel was damaged as well. This meant two new tyres were needed, leaving the expedition with no fresh replacements for the rest of the journey. 
With a Jinx hybrid on the move again and some stress-free motorway ahead of us, I was able to focus on how the most economical Range Rover ever feels like to drive. Some manufacturers like Lexus often shout about that their cars are hybrid and you have like some digital display there which shows how the power source is you know, being produced either from the battery or from the engine. Whereas on this one, well, Land Rover haven't really bothered with that. They want it to just seem like a normal Range Rover, really, and it does just feel like that when you're driving it. What you've got really to signify it's a hybrid is this little charge meter down there. It does feel a little different, though. The hybrid uses a 3-litre diesel that's mated to an electric motor to produce a combined 335 brake horsepower. Yet the official economy is 44 miles per gallon. And as the electric motor delivers its torque instantly, the pickup is even snappier than the impressive 0-60 time of 6.9 seconds suggests. In fact, the hybrid seemed perfectly suited to driving in India, something I discovered when we took a wrong turn and ended up driving over a bridge meant only for lorries. Stuck in the mother of all traffic jams and wedged between huge trucks, we crept along in electric mode to save fuel. Fully charged, the hybrid's lithium-ion batteries can drive the SUV on electricity alone for one mile and up to 30 miles per hour. Eventually, we made it to the city of Surat. Here, we encountered the craziest driving we had seen so far on the trip. According to the locals, there are three things you need to drive in India. Good brakes, a good horn, and good luck. Speaking of which, after a quick look into the bonnet for bombs, we were allowed into our overnight stopover. Now, just a few hundred miles lay between us and our final destination, Mumbai. Well, here we are then. We're about to embark on our final leg of the journey. We've got 180 miles to go out to Mumbai. It's 5 a.m. in the morning, feeling pretty tired. But I can think of worse vehicles to be traveling in than this Range Rover and seeing as we've got the luxury seats in the back, I think I might climb back there, let someone else do the driving and have a bit of a snooze. The new Range Rover is slightly bigger in the back than before, but for having a nap, it's still not quite as comfy as a Mercedes S-Class. And as the sun rose in the sky and I woke up, the first thing I saw out the window was another truck on its side. Soon we arrived at some toll booths where children were selling lucky charms to guard against the evil spirits that cause road accidents. So we bought some and also gave them our breakfast boxes for extra good luck. Well I've had a few hours sleep now so I'm feeling a little bit less jaded. About 50 miles outside of Mumbai so I'm going to take over the driving again and take us all the way in to our final destination. Hopefully the traffic isn't going to be too mental. Actually, at first it seemed fine, but then it appeared that I'd spoken too soon because the traffic started to back up. It's going to take a while, I think, to do these final 25 miles, you know, because we're just moving at a snail's pace and there's all kinds of craziness going on. I've got a feeling it's going to be absolutely, whoa, <laughs> I got cut up by a tuk-tuk. We had to battle our way through the melee, and eventually we came to the Rajiv Gandhi Ceiling Bridge. This would take us into the centre of Mumbai, and our final destination. Wow, that is spectacular. And it truly was. But there's a thing with Mumbai. It's standing as a world-class city is clear to see. But so too is the poverty. Over the bridge and into the city centre, the traffic began to build up again. And as it did, driving standards started to decline. Driving the Range Rover Hybrid here in Mumbai has taught me a couple of things about it. The instant response from the electric motor of the hybrid system is great for shutting the door if someone tries to sneak in just in front of you in a Hindustan ambassador. Another thing is the size of the vehicle gives you plenty of presence on the road. Then there's the horn. The noise of it has, it has plenty of authority to bully people out of the way. The only problem is, is that the actual horn itself is quite in the centre of the steering wheel, so you have to drive along one-handed. Be handy if it was just a bit closer out here for driving in these conditions, because you really do need both hands on the wheel, because it is just completely mad. 
while India might not be known for driving manners, it certainly knows how to put on a welcoming committee. Here we go then. <laughs> Arriving at our destination. We've got a drum procession to greet us. And we're doing a photo shoot while driving. <laughs> this is a little bit special. After 53 days on the road, Land Rover's team of technicians, guides and drivers were ecstatic to have completed the world's first ever hybrid expedition. And so they decided to have an impromptu party. Like that is quite a welcome and I, I'm totally shattered now. Dancing like an idiot as I'm at some kind of rave. A bunch of middle-aged journalists and it's such an epic journey they've been on 16,000 kilometers, 10,000 miles, and this is the end, so they've got every right to party. The real celebrations will be later that night at our hotel. And as we finally arrived there, Land Rover's team worked out that over the whole 10,000 mile expedition, on average, the hybrids had returned 36 miles per gallon. That's not bad, considering some of the extreme conditions the vehicles were driven in. Well, what an incredible end to an incredible journey, and what a privilege to be able to drive the final leg. And do you know what? I can't think of a better way for Land Rover to show off the capabilities of this new Range Rover hybrid than driving it from Birmingham 10,000 miles all the way to here in Mumbai.